walked into the tank and did this. Oh, oh my goodness. But believe it or not, he did something more wild than that by asking for $300,000 for 10% of his pumpkin scraping glove business. That is a $3 million valuation, in case you didn't know. So this is it. It's literally like a super long glove that has a scraper attached, and you can use it to scrape out pumpkins for jack-o'-lanterns. They started selling at the end of September, beginning of October 2021, and made $58,000 in sales. Not $3 million, but, you know. And at this point in his business, from January till now, he had made $52,000. Again, not $3 million. You can buy them for $9.99 online, or they range from $12 to $15.99, based on, he has a couple different, like a kid's kit and an adult kit. So you see this business and you think, oh, nice and simple, probably like an at-home startup business, good for him, probably hasn't put that much money into it. That's where you'd be wrong. Him and his partners have put $850,000 into this business. So this doesn't explain where all that money is, but one of the biggest mistakes they made is him and his partners decided to buy a machine in China to make these gloves with the caveat that they had to order $300,000 worth of gloves. So this man and his partners were like, yes, we'll order $300,000 of gloves before we've ever sold one. It'll be fine. It was not fine, and pretty much all the sharks were out at this point. All of them pretty much talk about how it's way too much of a risk to have this much inventory and also just not a lot of sales and it'd be too much for an investor to take on at this point. So final thoughts, um, I don't really have a big issue with the product itself per se. I wouldn't use it though. I like the gooey stuff in the pumpkins and I also just don't understand why people aren't just using gloves already if they don't like it and then scraping it out with whatever they scrape it out with, a spoon or... Whatever, but I, there are people who like to buy jack-o'-lantern kits and things of this nature, and I can see them maybe being into it. And maybe with kids, again, I don't have kids, so maybe that would help. My big issue is the inventory thing. I just can't, I can't fathom buying $300,000 worth of inventory when you have not sold one yet. Like, you need to find somebody who can make just a couple for you and go from there, sell them, sell the idea, see how it does, and then scale up like that and buy your own machine and do all that. I It's just ridiculous to me. This was my fail of the episode. Please let me know what y'all think and I'll see you in the next one. Besties Millie and Taylor came into the tank looking for $100,000 for 10% of their folding yoga mat business. So what makes their yoga mat different and unique is number one, it folds instead of rolling. Number two, it can be used as like different equipment or for different support. And number three, it lays really, really flat considering you don't roll it up. They've been around about six months at this point and made $110,000 in sales. Not quite the one million valuation that they asked for, but you know, they each put in about $25,000 to start and now it is what it is today. They sell completely off their website, that is it, and the main marketing they do is just doing posting and stuff. So they really haven't spent a lot on bringing themselves out there and still have pretty good sales. So Damon chimes in and he says he doesn't know this market at all, so he goes out. Kendra Scott is our guest shark for this and she doesn't see the longevity of it because there are no rebuys, but also she sells jewelry. I don't like Kendra Scott, so what she says never makes sense to me. Kevin also doesn't see this as a business for him, so he goes out and Mark goes out because he doesn't want to compete with his other Shark Tank business, Bala, which also makes premium workout type stuff. That leaves us with Lori, who decides to make an offer of $100,000 for 15% of their company, along with a $1 royalty for every unit sold until she recoups her $100,000. So they're initially worried about the royalty, they're worried about it siphoning cash while they're trying to grow. I don't really agree with them on this because they are making about $50 a mat, so like, what's a dollar? But you know, we all have our own opinions about that. So they counter with $100,000 for 20%. But Lori says that without a royalty, she would need 25% for $100,000. They try for maybe $150,000 for 22.5. No. Why? I don't know why they countered this. They also counter for $100,000 for 15% with a 35% royalty. Lori thinks about it and says, 75 cents. And then they make a deal. So for my final thoughts, I mean, margin's great. Um, it seems like they're growing pretty well for only being in business six months. 
I don't really get how this is much different from other yoga mats. I mean, I, I mean, I get what's different, but I, <laughs> I don't do yoga. Also, the yoga mat I have, I had to buy in college, and it is still in my closet since I graduated college. So this, I'm not the demographic for this. So if y'all have some opinions about this yoga mat, please let me know in the comments below, and I will see y'all on the next business. Today, you're going to turn this Mama O's premium kimchi kit to Mama O's premium kimchi. It's like sex education, but spicier. <laughs> Mother and son duo Kadeem and Mama O came into the Shark Tank looking for $250,000 for 10% of their kimchi business. So pretty much they do everything kimchi. They have kimchi kits so you can make it at home by yourself. They also have already made kimchi. They have sauce, paste anything and everything kimchi. So they have excellent margins all around. I'm not gonna talk about all of them because there's too many products, but for example, the kimchi kit costs them $8.25 to make and they sell for $45 on their website. On top of the great margins, they also have pretty great sales. Last year they did $815,000 and this year they're projected at $1 million, which isn't quite their 2.5 million valuation, but so many people have been asking for ridiculous valuations this season, so I'm not even mad at them for their valuation. They do have a website they sell on, but they said the majority of their sales come from stores such as Whole Foods that they're in. So Kevin, Mark, Lori, and Kendra, because remember Kendra Scott's our guest shark for this episode, all go out for varying reasons of not a kimchi person, or they don't want to educate people about kimchi, or they think the business is too small, and then we're down to just Damon. So after a little back and forth, Damon goes out. He just doesn't think they're ready to change their business model considering they've been working together as a family since 2008, which, yeah, it can be hard to do that. So unfortunately, we didn't get a deal for Mama O's kimchi. My final thoughts are I really want to try it. Um, I'm debating buying this whole kit and making a video about it. So if y'all think I should do that, let me know. Um, I also want to try to go to my nearest Whole Foods and try to get the pre-made one. So... I'll update y'all if and when I can do that. And let me know what y'all think. Have y'all tried kimchi? Do you like kimchi? Do you think it's too much to educate people on? I already knew what kimchi was. So I was kind of surprised at the at the sharks not knowing. But honestly, it, uh, they surprise me a lot of times with the stuff they don't know. So I don't even know why I am surprised anymore. That's it for this one. And I'll see you in the next one. I'm, at. I'm looking at the business model strictly as, strictly as an investment. Anytime it's 350000 that's serious capital. I'm not even going to beat you up in the $3.5 million valuation, although I should. It's in my DNA to do that, but I'm going to hold back because I'm under anger management this year. So. <laughs> so Kevin and Lori, not sharks Kevin and Lori, but entrepreneurs Kevin and Lori, walked into the tank looking for $350,000 for 10% of their sandcastle making kits. So this is it. The big thing that makes theirs different from other sandcastle kits is they have a split mold design. So pretty much when you make your little sandcastle, you can click the little side things you see there and take it apart this way instead of having to like tap on the bottom of a bucket or whatnot. They also have these cute little tools so you can make little windows and doors and all the fun things in your castle. Before they can even get into sales, Kevin the Shark asks, isn't this just such a seasonal product? All right, guys, look. This is a very, very seasonal product. It works in the snow. Oh. So their margins are about 27 to 32%. Last year they made $600,000 and this year they're projected at 3 million. That sounds pretty great considering their valuation is 3.5 million, but last year they actually lost $100,000. They didn't make a profit at all. They said this year though, they're gonna make $300,000 off of that 3 million projected, so. So through a lot of discussion about big box stores and what's the best for the business, Mark sees them as chasing sales instead of profits and margins and goes out. Then Kevin and Lori are sharks also go out. Kevin feels like they just don't really have the business nailed down and thinks they should switch completely to direct a customer. Then the ultimate showdown between Kendra Scott and Damon John. Kendra thinks Kevin is completely wrong. She thinks they are already going down the right path and just need to keep working to build that brand and keep selling in those stores. So she makes an offer of $350,000 for 20%. Damon, on the other hand, thinks Kendra's completely wrong. He thinks this is a complete licensing play, aka his wheelhouse, and he offers $350,000 for 25%. 
Then these two knuckleheads ask if they'll work together, even though they both have completely different ideas for the business, so they obviously reject this idea. They decide they want to go with Kendra and counter her $350,000 for 15%, and she accepts. I don't really think either deal is right or wrong. I personally would just rather do a licensing play if this was my business, but again, it's not my business, it's their business, and I'm happy for them making a deal. It seems really fun, so I don't know, good for them.